guys and welcome to this video. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different because it's not a vlog. This will be a Q&A and that is because multiple of you guys often reach out and ask questions about um, my life here in Australia and um, yeah. So I thought it would be really fun to make a Q&A and then answer a bunch of these questions for all of you guys. A couple of days ago I did ask you guys on Instagram if you had any questions and I have written them down on my notes so I'm gonna answer each and every one of them. Alright, the first one. Why did you end up in Byron? Um, I think for me why I, I chose to go to Australia overall was that I knew I was not going to do van life over winter in Europe because I didn't want to spend the money I had saved up for van life in Europe in winter because often the weather is not that nice and you're often confined to being only in the south of Europe where I want to be able to travel more uh, in Europe when I'm in my van. So that's why I was like, okay, I should probably go back home and save up more money so I have more money for summer in Europe in my van. But after six months of traveling in my van and having adventures and learning how to surf, I was like, it's just really depressing going back to Denmark um, in winter, in rainy season, going back to working in daycare with lovely kids. But um, it was just not the vibe. So I was like, okay, what can I do where I travel, I can surf, uh, I can go somewhere summary um, without it costing me too much money um, and where I don't spend all of my savings. So I researched about Australia because I knew they had summer whilst we in Europe have winter so I could escape to the summer, I could go somewhere where I could improve on my surfing, I can speak the language which is important for me so it's, it's not that much of a hassle to, to find a job and they have the working holiday visa which is pretty popular among backpackers so it's not that much like it's pretty easy to get the visa to go here um, so that's how I ended up choosing Australia and as for Byron that was really random um, I think I was in Portugal at that point and I was like oh, I just learned to surf I had so much fun with surfing and then I was watching a reel on Instagram where it showed Byron and it just showed these like blue water, uh, green jungly vibes and it just seemed really cool and you could surf and I was like wow this seems like an amazing place I have to research a little bit more about it and I researched about Byron and um, I just fell in love with it honestly and um, but the major factor in me moving to Byron which answering the next question how did you find a room in Byron was that I uh, researched online and then I found on a website called co-living I found this hostel vibe um, ish place like hostel where it is called life in Byron and it is essentially kind of a hostel, kind of a dormitory. Um, it is under an English school called Lexis English. So a bunch of the people here, they study English at the English school, which is just up the stairs here. And then they live here in the dormitory in the hostel. But they also open up for people living and working in Byron, which was me. And then I just found um, this spot on co-living but they also have their own uh, website um, which I can show you here somewhere in the video so I already found it from back home which I was really happy about because later when I arrived I found out like Byron is a really popular little town to live in there's not a lot of spots in hostels or rooms or places to live here if you come as a backpacker and you haven't planned anything so a lot of people there just like they've been looking a lot and couldn't find a place to live that was cheap enough um, so I was really lucky to live here um, I can also show how much I pay for um, I lived in a single room the first two months and now I've moved into a three-person room with two other girls, which is also really nice. Um, but this is around the price I pay to live in a single room and a three-person room. It's kind of the same price, but it's actually because I ended up paying 
less than I should have for the uh, single room because they made a mistake on the website. So that was just nice for me. And it may seem a lot for just like one room with two other girls. Uh, and it does cost a lot of money, but I'm in the middle of Byron. I'm two minutes away from the town center and five minutes away from the beach. And yeah, it's just a really, really great location for Byron. And um, yeah, it costs a lot of money here. Like Byron is an expensive town, so that's just how it is. But overall, it's pretty cheap to live here compared to other places. The next one is how did you find a job in Australia? So, I have actually just posted some reels about this on my Instagram here where I write all of my experiences down with everything you need to know before finding a job in Australia. But I ended up finding a job here with just having made my CV from back home, written it in English, uh, printed it out and then I went to Byron um, with my CVs and here you basically just walk around town and ask are you guys hiring I have a CV I'm very nice stuff like that you know so you just go from from the different places and hand in your CV for me I handed in CVs for three days before I got a job or before I got a trial shift um, but it was in general actually kind of a frustrating experience because I um, maybe for me I thought that it would be a bit easier to find a job I thought I would go to somewhere be like here's my CV and they would be like oh we'll hire you on the first day but I actually just found out it was way harder than I expected I walked around and often they were like, no, we're not hiring, no, 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 no. Or they say, do you have any hospitality experience? And I'm like, mm, I've worked at a bakery, but I haven't been a waitress. And that was often like a big no for them because they want me to have more waitressing experience. So I thought it was pretty, like people were nice, but it was just really frustrating getting told no nearly every place I went to. I don't think it's the overall experience of finding a job in Australia. I think it's just the overall experience of finding a job in Byron. Because so many backpackers go to Byron and they want to live in Byron. And Byron is very popular but it's not that big of a town. So it's limited how many jobs there are. And I know some of my friends, they've been looking for weeks without finding a job. I think it's just all about being lucky. Because on my third day of looking for a job, I heard back from two places that I had a trial shift and in Australia here they do trial shifts get invited to a shift where you come and work for a couple of hours and they test you out and see if they like you and if you are good enough for the job basically and then afterwards they will let you know if you got the job or not uh, I went to the first place first which is now my current job at a cafe as a waitress and I worked there for like three hours ish and then afterwards they emailed me and they let me know I got the job and um, that's how I found a job but I also know a lot of people they do work for accommodation at hostels um, and of course they do their 88 days of farm work here in Australia um, so there's a lot of like Facebook groups for it and um, yeah, work for accommodation or um, work in hospitality like I've done but that's my personal experience of finding a job how did you make new friends in Australia? So, for me, it has been pretty easy to make new friends here in Australia because of where I'm living. Where I'm living, as I said, it's language school and a lot of the people here, they live here for around three months. So, they are not people that like come to Byron for a couple of days and leave. So, I think all of us are really open to making new friends and speaking English and uh, learning and getting to know new people so for me it has been pretty easy it's definitely very intimidating coming here the first day and um, having shared spaces like the kitchen the common rooms and the bathroom and toilets where it's like really nerve-wracking when you don't know anyone but it also forced you to meet people and get to know them and just like you're sitting and you're cooking and and you're eating and like you'll 
naturally end up talking to people here, which made uh, me getting to know people and making new friends really, really easy, which was so nice because I was a bit worried about how that would be here in town. Um, I've also made friends from my work. Some of my colleagues are now my really good friends and they're so, so nice and funny and I have so much fun when I go to work every day because it's with friends. And the third is that I also made some friends over my Instagram because some of uh, the girls that are also in Byron from Denmark, they texted me and were like, hi, like, I can see that you're also in Byron. Hey, do you want to like meet up and go for a coffee or go, f go to the beach or something like that? And then I've basically just met up with them and we've ended up becoming really good friends. So yeah making friends from the hostel I live in, from my work, and from Instagram, and from finding a little Danish group here in Byron where we can hang out together, which has been really nice. So I think this is probably the, the stage or like the time in my life where I have been the most social ever. Like I've always thought, ah, uh, I like hanging out with people, but I need my own space and I need time to chill which I still do, but here I'm like, I'm hanging out with people constantly, like all the time, which has surprised me a lot because I was like, I didn't know I could do that. Um, but I'm really just having so much fun and I feel comfortable. And I think it's also because I live with the people that I'm friends with. So we're all just like chill and like, you don't have to be on on when you're together all the time, which is cool. And yeah, I kind of answered the previous question, but how many Danish people have you met? I meet a lot that are on vacation here in Byron as backpackers or as families. Sometimes when I'm working, I can hear them speak Danish and I'm like, oh, hi, fellow Danes, and then we talk. But as for people living in Byron that are from Denmark, I have met, I've met eight. So I know eight people that are living in Byron and living here like I am and working. Um, and some of them are my really really good friends so it's super nice just like also uh, being able to speak Danish with each other and like knowing the inside jokes and just sharing some of the values you, you do when you come from the same country which has been really really nice the next one is are you planning on traveling whilst in Australia so for me, this has never been a big Australia traveling trip because I just, I simply don't have the money. And the money I do have, I want to save for um, my van trip in Europe this summer. So this has mostly just been a way of me going to Australia and getting a life here and creating a life and settling down. Uh, but just in another country where it's more tropical, I can surf, I can, I can be in the sun. Um, but I am planning to do some small trips here and there. I'd like to go to Sydney um, and then I'd like to do some road trips with friends um, but I'll see where I end up. For me it's like I work but I work around four days a week so I'm making enough money to cover my expenses here but not enough to to earn money to travel here. So I'd love to one day and I think I'll definitely come back to travel more in Australia because it's, it's beautiful country um, but I'll do some small trips here and there but if you guys have any suggestions please leave it in the comments down below I'd love some suggestions because Australia is such a big country and I just don't know what to pick like for my few trips I'm gonna do where is your black swimsuit from and if you haven't seen it is this swimsuit I think people are asking about uh, really nice for surfing and just really beautiful and flattering in general um, it is sold out, but it is from Zalando. I can also put a picture in here. But it is from Zalando, um, and it was pretty cheap. It was like 300, 400 kroner, which I don't know. Like you can see here what it cost in euros and Australian dollars. But it is, it is sold out. However, there is a lot of like nice black long sleeve swimsuits um, that you can get all kinds of spots. I'll see if I can find some similar swimsuit and I'll put them in here somewhere.
I also have another really really cute swimsuit which is from a girl here in Australia that makes her own swimsuits and they're so beautiful it's this company and it is this swimsuit and um, pretty expensive but it's a small business and really worth it then I have another question would you like to stay longer in Australia Ah, and this is a difficult one so I'm planning to stay here until mid-April and I love Australia I However, I think I will go home in April. If I had a reason to stay here longer, I would. I love Australia and I could definitely see myself living here at one point in my life. Um, if it weren't for the, um, like that many restrictions of like living here with the visa, I could come back and like stay forever. Like I love Australia, I love the people. I love the nature, um, yeah, I just really like Australia and uh, I could definitely see myself living here in one point of my life, um, but for now I don't think I'll stay longer. However, I did book my uh, flight home with the option to extend like my stay here uh, and change the date of the flight, so if I'd like to stay longer, that is a possibility. Right now, I'm just really unsure of what to do because I didn't expect to love it here that much. So I could live here for so long, as I said before. The thing is, like, if I'd like to stay here for another year or if I'd like to do come back here again at one point in my life to do a working holiday visa again, I have to have done three months of farm work during my first year here in Australia. So right now, my plan is to go home mid-April and I wouldn't have done my three, three months of farm work. So that means I'm not eligible to do a second year visa at one point in my life, which I'm really sad about. So I'm really in a dilemma of what to do because I want to go home and travel in my van, but on the other side, I also want to be able to go to Australia again on a, on a second visa, but I have to do the farm work and uh, right now that's just not in the cards because I'd like to have my time here in Byron, but I don't know what to do. Should I stay here longer, do my three months of farm work, or should I go back and travel in my van? It's also difficult because I have to figure out what I want to do with my life after summer. This is not a question anyone answer or ask, but it is my third gap year um, and I should technically start going to uni after summer. I just don't know because like, I love traveling and I love adventuring um, and I kind of want to just like go with the flow and just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, but I just don't have the money to keep going like I am right now. I think it's difficult because I think it's like socially acceptable in Denmark to take three gap years and then go to uni and then, you know, study for many years. But I don't know if I want to. Uh, I guess you never feel ready and maybe it will be a lot of fun studying as well. Uh, but I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life but I have some, some time for that. But this is the overall vibe in my head right now, so you guys can probably understand why I'm a little bit confused about what I'm gonna do. <laughs> All right, then I have favorite things about Byron and least favorite things about Byron. One of my favorite things about Byron is definitely the nature. I love that everything is so green here so green it's so beautiful like you can do a uh, bike two minutes away from from like the the neighborhood I'm in now and then just like see being kind of like a jungly foresty place and beautiful beaches and yeah just overall the nature here is absolutely stunning I'm blown away every time I leave my hostel here like it's just it's gorgeous here, it's really really gorgeous. I think the people here, the people here are really nice. Really interesting people, really open people, really kind people often. They, I feel like, have a different approach of life, some of them at least, like the people I've talked to. They 
come here and they live their life and there's this saying like you live to work or you work to live where I feel like sometimes in, in Denmark at least it's like you live to work where I feel like the approach here is that you work to live so like I work I do my hours but when I'm off like I'm living my life which also happens to me like I have never been that less on my phone, watched less, less uh, shows, been less on my computer in my entire life. Like, I go and sometimes I wake up before sunrise, I surf for a couple of hours, then I go to work, I work for six, seven, eight hours, I go home, it's around three o'clock, and I have the whole day. Like, maybe I'll go surfing again, maybe I'll go to the beach. I'll hang out with friends, maybe at night we'll end up doing a barbecue together or watching the sunset, um, which is really, really beautiful from here. So it's just like, life here is just so nice. Like, I work, yes, but like my everyday life is just, and I don't want to like hype it up and make it seem like it's amazing all the time because yeah, I have sucky days and half of the time it's raining here in Byron. But whenever the weather is nice, like, it's just magical. Like, yes, I go work, but then I go and I go surf and I have the best time with friends and we go out for drinks every every week and, and it's just so much fun. Like, I think that's my favorite thing about Byron actually is that like, yes, I'm having an everyday life, normal life, but I'm having so much fun here whilst I'm doing it and I'm being in nature, I'm being in the water and being surrounded by really really nice and positive people that has a really positive impact in my life and it's amazing just spending so much time outside and so little time on my screen which um, yeah which is pretty cool I think. Least favorite things about Byron is probably I said it's a not it's nice that it's a small town but sometimes it can also be a little bit too small so things can get boring here if it rains which it does quite a lot here in Byron I didn't expect that when I moved to Australia but it rains a lot here like everything is green and beautiful but there is a reason for it it rains a lot um, so whenever it rains a lot there's not a lot to do here Byron is kind of a city that invites you to be outside be out on the beach be be out for a barbecue, for a coffee with friends, um, go surfing, go hiking, go swimming, go running, stuff like that. And if it's raining a lot, then it's like, and in, in, in Byron, it's, in, it's not like just like raining, it's pouring, it's pouring, it's like a storm sometimes. Um, so if it rains here and if the weather is not nice, it's kind of sucky being in Byron because then you're confined to staying inside. Um, and people just get restless because we're so much we're used to being so much outside. And then I got a question as to why I'm not posting as much on Instagram anymore. And that kind of relates to what I previously talked about. But I just like I'm having the time of my life here. And I spend so little time on my phone that I barely get to capture a lot of the moments that I'm having, which is fine like I'm having them in here and that's the most important thing um, but yeah I'm just barely on my phone anymore and I don't want to spend time sitting and getting maybe frustrated editing and I have to be fast because everybody are they are out surfing or everybody are like having a barbecue I don't want to compromise on my experiences of being here um, to post something or to sit and edit all day um, if the weather is nice so like I I just I just don't post this often anymore and like for me yeah like I'm definitely losing followers because if you want to keep um, having followers and keep gaining followers you have to post every single day and it mostly has to be real so you have to be creative and and create these videos for Instagram and for me it just got so frustrating frustrating in the end because I would maybe post like like sit and edit and I would really like something and I would post maybe a couple of times per week 
with with these reels but you basically have to post every day before the traction in your account begins and the algorithm likes you so i just got frustrated by it i was like i'm i don't want to post anything i don't feel passionate about so every time i post on instagram it's something i like and whenever i have time and when i feel proud of what i'm posting so i don't want to force myself to create content for you guys because then for me it doesn't feel right and it doesn't feel authentic um yeah and i love like connecting with you guys don't get me wrong but i just don't um have the time to post every single day um and i think that's okay for me because i do this as a like a, a hobby and a side project um but i'm not doing this for a living and um it's mostly just fun and if I'm not having fun when I'm doing it I feel like you can feel it I can feel it then I started posting on Instagram because I wanted to have fun with it and if I'm not having fun with it anymore then I'll stop you know so as long as I'm having fun and I feel passionate about what I'm doing then I'll keep doing it which is why I'm not posting as much but whatever I post I I really liked and I hope you guys like it as well and then I got this question. I don't know who, who it's from. It's from my good friend. And he asked me, do you have a dream? Are you living it? And my dream, I don't know if I specifically have a dream. I just, um, just like being happy. Just, I feel like why I've ended up being so in love with traveling and so in love with meeting new people and cultures is because I went on an exchange year as, um, a 15 year old. I was 15 year old when I went to the US to travel and that just opened my eyes to travel and meeting new people from different cultures, from from different places in the world and, and languages and ever since then like when I went there I was so happy. I was like like when you can just like feel in your heart that I'm like I'm just so happy um, and I think I've been chasing that feeling since and I've realized when I'm the happiest is when I'm traveling, I'm, I'm getting to know new people, I'm connected with nature, and I'm confident in my own skin. Um, and for me, that is traveling and that is um, moving and um, living in a van, being in nature, uh, getting to know new people, building up my confidence, finding out I can speak this language, I can get to know new people, I can like. When you travel, I feel like you get so independent and confident because you are often in like really hard situations and it not, it's not always fun, but you learn that like I can, I can be on my own and I can handle really hard situations and I can figure out a solution to these problems, um, which is, is really challenging, but also really enlightening and you learn so much about yourself so for me it's like every time I go out I learn something new about myself and and I love that and yeah like uh, this is the dream this is the dream I'm just like being happy and am I living it yes I am like I'm so happy like I sometimes I just walk and I'm just like I'm I just feel in my heart I'm just like I'm just so lucky to be able to live this life I'm living and and meet these incredible people and being in nature and being connected with nature and I'm just really happy I'm a happy girl here um, yeah and some of the last questions is do you get homesick for me I've never had a problem with being homesick um, from all the way from when I went uh, to the US when I was 15 I never got homesick but I miss my family like I miss them a lot like I love my family and I'm really really close with my family um, so of course I miss them and especially like when I see they're all together and hanging out I'm like oh I just want to like go there and hug them all and be with them um, but I know that I am the place that I'm supposed to be right now um, and that I am just really happy here um, and I'm the happiest here 
so I feel like I miss them a lot but whenever I miss them I just talk to them on FaceTime and it helps a lot uh, and we just talk for hours sometimes and I miss my family, miss my best friends um, but I also know that I am having the best time here and, and there's no need to focus too much on me missing them because that will maybe take take away from my like happiness and joy of being here so I acknowledge I am missing them and I would love to give them a hug right now but I'm also having so much fun here and I need to stay here and be in the moment here and live my life here and whenever I'm back home just appreciate my time with them like mostly what I'm actually missing is like what I'm, I'm yearning to is just like showing them around here. I would love for my family to come so I can show them Byron, show them Australia, show them my little spots here. Um, because I would just love to show my family around here. This is my home now, so yeah, I would love to show them around. Um, and lastly, any recommendations if I'm thinking about going to Australia, but I'm not sure. For me, it's like just go for it like like what what can happen what's the worst thing that can happen is the worst thing is that you come here and you figure out this is not me i don't like it um i don't like being here then you're a plane ticket away from going home like you can always go home if you don't feel like it there's always gonna pe be people willing to help you here and and be there for you there's just like there's so many good people here and you'll always find someone to help you out and if you don't like it you can go home but you probably won't like i feel like so many people they say they tell me like oh i would never be able to go on my own but like i feel like most people would you just have to to book that plane ticket book that flight and just go on and do it you learn so much about yourself and you figure out that you can handle it and you, you can handle most situations. You gain so much confidence and you are way more open to meeting new people. A bunch of people, they travel solo here as well, so you'll meet others like you and you'll really quickly connect because like when you're in the same situation and you're both on your own, you connect with people like this like so quickly. So don't worry about like being lonely like of course you'll feel lonely sometimes but you can always find people to to hang out with here there is a bunch of different facebook uh, groups where you can find a travel buddy where you can connect with people that are also traveling solo i can see if i can find some here um but go do it like do some research of course, where would you like to go, what is the main objective, do you like to work, do you like to travel, what is it you want to do here in Aussie and then if you're here for traveling and you stay in hostels, you will meet a bunch of people like you and you'll create friends and you'll have the best time and maybe you'll find travel buddies, maybe you'll continue on your own and meet new people along the way. Like, I was, and don't get me wrong, it's not easy, I was so nervous coming here the first couple of days when I was here I was like, this is so overwhelming, there's so many people, like how can I get into a group of people, how can I meet new people? But after a week I was like, yeah, like, it, I, everything will solve itself and you'll meet the right people and, and I feel like, I don't know, everything happens for a reason and, and you'll find your way. So I definitely just encourage you to do some research about Australia find out what is your main objective, do you want to work, do you want to travel, um, what do you want to do and connect with people on Facebook groups uh, maybe watch some like YouTube, find someone on Instagram that does the same um, and like look how they are doing I watched a lot of like different YouTube videos before I went to Australia, I can also link put them here um, and they help me prepare for what I need to get done with the visa and with uh, accommodation and with banks and with jobs and, and everything with like the practical stuff so I had all of that fixed and I need and I knew what I needed to do before I got here which was really nice for me because then I, I know okay I, I may not know who I'm gonna meet but I know I have 
everything in order about like the practical stuff with banks, with tax file number, with jobs, uh, with the visa. So I have all of that figured out. So that's something that I don't have to worry about when I go to the to go to Aussie, uh, which really was which was really nice. So I could just focus on settling in, in and and getting to know the town and getting to know the people here when um, I arrived. So yeah, that's some of the, the recommendations I have, but but honestly, go for it. Like, you have nothing to lose. Just go for it, have fun, and you'll probably fall in love with it as much as I have. Yeah. Um, and on that note, that will be the end of this q and I have no idea. I feel like I've been talking for so long. Um, I have no idea how long this will be. But that was the end of this Q&A. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below or text me on Instagram. I, I always, always, always love chatting and connecting with you guys. It's so much fun. And I've gained so much from um, having this little community online. And it's just so nice. Um, being inspired by you and you guys being inspired by what I'm doing. Yeah, so if you aren't already subscribed, I highly recommend you guys to subscribe and like and comment. It really, really helps me out um, with hopefully one day getting monetized so I can earn a little bit of money from doing this uh, these videos. Um, but that's one day. It, it takes time. But I'm having so much fun and um, I hope you like the video. And um, yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.